I've analyzed 4,967 data analytics jobs throughout my career, and honestly, the results still shock me. Everyone's out here telling you, learn Python, learn Tableau. There's just so much noise out there, but guess what? Only 26% of job postings actually require Tableau. Meanwhile, there's one skill that shows up in over 50% of job postings that's not talked about enough. Today, I'm breaking down the top five entry-level data analytics skills that will actually land you interviews. And this is based on real data. I mean, as a data analyst, we should all love data, right? The skill that rules them all and keeps showing up in so many job postings is yes, SQL. SQL shows up in 52.9% of job postings. That's literally over half. Half. And maybe you're wondering how I got to 52.9% and maybe you're even a little skeptical as well, but there have been so many studies on how important SQL is to a data analytics job search. This particular study shows that SQL is in 52.9% of data analytics job postings and the second place skill isn't even close to SQL. Not only is SQL all the way at the top, but it's absolutely dominating and no other skills are even coming close. Even looking outside of just data analytics roles, SQL is the number two most popular programming and coding language for professional developers at 54.1%. And yes, I know a lot of people are gonna fight me on whether SQL is a programming language or a coding language or not, but we can fight about that in the comments. So why is SQL so important and showing up so much in all of these entry-level job descriptions? Well, I'll tell you, it's not just entry-level positions, it's also mid-level and senior-level data analytics positions as well. The reason why is because SQL is the bread and butter of any type of data role. Data science, data engineering, data analytics, all data roles are using SQL. SQL is the foundation of how we talk to the database and get the data out that we actually want. In a database, you'll have hundreds or thousands of tables, and each table is probably going to have hundreds of columns and millions of rows. So it can be really hard to find what you need in a quick and efficient way. SQL helps us do this, and it helps us get hyper-specific about pulling the exact data we want and then transforming it, wrangling it, doing calculations, and actually preparing that raw data ready for analysis, which is where you start to do your data visualization, statistics, and all that other fancy stuff. And truly in all the data analytics roles I've had from entry level all the way to data analytics manager, SQL has always been at least like 70 or 80% of the job. It's the universal language and tool that all companies use regardless of how big they are or what industry they're in. It's not like a super fancy, new, sexy, shiny tool, but it keeps the lights on and keeps the bills paid. There's a lot you can do in SQL, but the things you really need to know how to do are combining data sets, cleaning and transforming data, doing different calculations, in SQL, using skills such as CTEs, subqueries, set operations, window functions, creating views, and honestly, many more. Speaking of SQL, if you want to build actual data projects that recruiters and hiring managers love, I have got something for you. I have a free intro to SQL course where you can learn the basics of SQL and build your first mini data analytics project in only 30 minutes. This is perfect for newbies and complete beginners, even if you've never coded before. But if you're more on the intermediate side, I've got something for you too. My intermediate course is more advanced and more focused on building a portfolio and getting ready for your job search. With my support, of course. Check out the links in the description. The intro course is completely free and I will walk you through step by step. The next skill we're gonna talk about is the boring skill that will actually get you paid. And this is in 50.5% of job descriptions, so still over half. And it is Microsoft Excel. I know, maybe you were thinking I was gonna say something a little more exciting like Agentic AI or Gen AI, but guess what? It's Excel. In all the jobs that mention Microsoft Office nowadays, over half of them ask for Excel. People love to say that Excel is so old, Excel is so outdated. I mean, it's old in the sense that it's a legacy product that's been around for a long time, but it's not old as in outdated by any means. Because guess what? Excel is a spreadsheet tool and businesses thrive on spreadsheets. Why? because anybody can use a spreadsheet. There are so many different levels of spreadsheet knowledge. Any non-technical person can use spreadsheets on the most basic level with no advanced technical knowledge. But then of course, if you're a data analyst and you're someone who does have more advanced technical knowledge, then you can do way more cool things in Excel. You can even do machine learning and build models. And now Microsoft just launched Copilot in Excel too. So now you can actually use generative AI in Excel, which is crazy. So just because Excel is an older established tool doesn't mean 
mean that businesses don't still use it and it doesn't mean that you can't perform a really good analysis in it. Because I promise you, if you're working with stakeholders in sales, finance, executives, any other field that's not data analytics, they're gonna understand and wanna use Excel, which means that a lot of your analyses are gonna be done in Excel or transferred to an Excel sheet at the end and passed over to stakeholders. So honestly, you should make sure that you know how to do basic descriptive statistics in Excel. So like min, max, sum, average, median, and then of course, pivot tables to summarize data, basic data visualizations, and of course, VLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, and INDEX MATCH. Those are basically SQL joins, but in Excel. And sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do in Excel. So since so many companies thrive on Excel and it's a common tool known across many different industries and business domains, Excel is a tool that will definitely get you hired faster. The next skill we're gonna talk about is programming languages, and I'm gonna tell you the truth. Python is required in 31.2% of jobs and and R is required in 24.9% of jobs. I'm honestly not surprised that Python is required in more job descriptions than R, but I am surprised that it's so close. I really thought that Python would be way more higher than R on the ranking scale. To give you my complete honest opinion and advice, you don't need to know Python or R to get your first job in data. It is optional, but it will help you stand out because let's get real for a sec. A lot of companies will put Python or R in a job description. They'll say this would be a nice to have. This is optional. We would love it if you had this skill, but most companies are not using Python and R as much as they claim to be, at least not in data analytics roles. I found that a lot of companies put it in their job descriptions because they want to attract talent that knows Python and R. But then once you get inside the company, you realize that everything is done in SQL and Excel. Of course, that's not every data analytics job, you might actually find one that does use Python or R every single day, but that's just my opinion. So if you're super stressed about learning Python or R, don't stress about it too much and just focus on the other skills and I promise you'll be fine. But if you're ready for the challenge and you really do wanna stand out beyond all the rest when applying for jobs, you could learn Python or R, but which one should you learn? Looking at the data, Python is in more job descriptions. So yes, it does make sense to learn Python, but I will tell you based on my experience that Python is definitely the better language to learn here because R is a little bit more of a statistical language. It's used more in academic academia, like in schools, in research, in science and statistics, whereas Python is a lot more versatile and it's used more in business because you can just do so much more with Python. And there's also a lot of tools as well out there in the data world that do use Python. And Python also opens up the door for you to work as an analytics engineer or a data engineer if you ever want to in the future. So if you're gonna learn one, definitely learn Python. If you wanna get started in Python, I recommend you start out with these libraries. Pandas, of course, it's a classic for data cleaning, data transfer transformation and data wrangling. Matplotlib and Seaborn are great for data visualization. NumPy is really good for statistics and arrays. And Scikit-learn is really good for statistics and machine learning and more data science stuff. The next skill on the list is number four on the list, but my opinion is that it should be higher on the list. And that's data visualization. We have Power BI, which shows up in 29% of job descriptions and Tableau, which shows up in 26.2% of jobs. Again, there's a lot of data analytics tools that do support data visualization, like like Excel or data science notebooks. So maybe not every company is locked into Power BI or Tableau. However, I do think those are really great skills and tools to learn when you're getting started out with data analytics. Both of these tools are really good playgrounds to just play around and see what data is, learn how to visualize it, learn how to connect data sets and just get your feet wet in data. But should you learn both? Absolutely not. Do not learn both. Anytime I see aspiring data analysts out there put Power BI and Tableau on their resume, I'm like, ah! What are you doing? <laughs> don't do that. The reason why is because you don't wanna spend time learning both on a very shallow level. It's better to take all of your time and put it towards one and learn one on a deeper level because these skills are so interchangeable in so many ways. And if you know Power BI super well, you can transfer those skills and learn Tableau super quickly and vice versa. But if you just know both on a shallow level, you don't really have that much knowledge. And now you just know a little bit of both, but you're not really a master in anything. So which one should you learn? I'll be honest, I am a little biased here because I am a Power BI girly. I use Power BI for over three years at the very beginning of my career. So I'm definitely biased here, but I'm going to share some pros and cons of each. I think Tableau is used by a lot more organizations right now because I've heard that it works better in organizations at scale. And I also think from a learning perspective, they also have Tableau public, which makes it super easy to share your projects and link them in your data analytics portfolio. However, Power BI is a lot more robust in my opinion 
opinion, it has a built-in data modeling portion. You have the Power Query editor, and it's also very seamless with other Microsoft products. And I think this really helped me grow really quickly at the beginning of my career because I just learned so much about data transformation and data modeling in Power BI. But Power BI is also really hard to use on a Mac. So if you're just learning data, I think it's totally fine to start out in Tableau. But you definitely need to learn how to import data sources and ETL, extract, transform, load data sources, how to clean data, transform data, visualize data in different types of charts. And you also need to learn how to make good dashboards and learning good dashboard design. So putting your high level KPIs at the top, complicated graphs in the middle, and then your tables and you know more granular stuff at the bottom. There's a lot of different rules for designing dashboards. So make sure you actually kind of learn those and how they flow. And the last skill is actually a curveball because it's not something that's explicitly listed as a skill in job descriptions, but it's something that I've noticed. And that is 84.9% of data analytics job descriptions don't require a certain amount of experience, but they instead focus on the skills that you have. And it's honestly great news for you if you're trying to break into data and you don't have a bunch of experience on your resume, which of course getting more experience is just going to make you more valuable because you're going to learn more and grow with every role and experience you do have. But data analytics is truly the type of role where your skills matter more than just experience. Data analytics is a field that so many people transition into from other corporate jobs or even non-corporate and non-technical roles because so many people use data in their day-to-day -day life and in their roles. So it's a field that a lot of people kind of gravitate to. So don't get caught up if you see a job description that says one to three years of experience. That is entry level in their eyes. So apply for it. But a lot of job descriptions don't even have a years of experience requirement. They're really just looking for specific skills and can you do the job? And yes, of course, they're looking for all the technical skills we talked about at the beginning of this video, but the way to really stand out here is soft skills. And I know that sounds so cliche. You've probably heard so much about soft skills, but the things you really wanna do are communication and business acumen. In my opinion, those are the two most important soft skills in data analytics. And you can highlight those skills in your data analytics portfolio by really connecting all of your projects and your code back to a business problem and finding a business solution. By clearly communicating your work and actually providing business recommendations that solve the business problem, that is literally 99% more than most people do. And that's how you can really stand out and have skills beyond just the technical skills. Honestly, most people are learning data analytics skills in the wrong order. They're focusing on all the courses, all the flashy stuff, and all the things that get so much attention and they're ignoring the things that actually get you hired. Like, yes, AI is cool and all that, but have you heard of SQL? Because that's what most companies are using. And yes, I know the job market is super competitive, but there are still so many companies out there that are desperate for data analysts that can solve real world business problems using these skills we just talked about. So if you're serious about breaking into data analytics, go grab my three-step data analytics roadmap from the course description. It's completely free and it'll tell you what your exact next steps are. You might even regret not reading it sooner. And if you're curious about what this job will look like every single day, go check out my video, A Day in the Life of a Data Analyst, to see what it actually is like every day to work as a data analyst. Bye!